everybody, this is Perch, and uh, I'm actually sitting outside uh, Sir Lone Buck's House of Comics and Geekery. It's a new shop that's opened up here in Woodenville, Washington. I'm going to go in and check that out here in a minute. I don't know the owner, so uh, this is this will be new for me. I get to uh, meet somebody in the area who's opening up a shop uh, who's not me, and that's, uh, that's special, particularly in light of me moving. Now I'm going to have to get a whole new network. I got a couple of people I know down in the, in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So that'll be, that'll be good. So we'll, we'll get on that. Anyway, um, this question that comes in from a viewer is kind of related to this. Uh, why do some stores only do direct market? Okay. Let's see what the question says. It says, Hey, Bert, straightforward question as in the subject. Why do some stores only deal in the direct market? I can understand only dealing in back issues since they're less of a risk. There's no requirement to place X orders to get Y variant, and stores have wiggle room on cost of their stock. Where I live, I have three stores in reasonable driving distance, and only one does direct market sales. Why is this? Is there a reason you as a former retailer can think of solely for dealing in the direct market? I find it especially odd since I've seen a couple stores make the opposite decision, cut out or heavily reduce their direct market, citing the risk and better stability from back issues. Um, so that's the question. So let me identify, let me, let me define a few things here. When uh, this, this person is talking about direct market, they're talking about uh, sales from, from Diamond or now Penguin Random House, Lunar. Um, they're talking about new comics, basically, the direct market coming in through new comics, not even trade, not manga, not the scholastic stuff, and not back issues, games, toys, Funko, all that kind of stuff. That's what they're referring to. And... Um, and for a long time in the 90s, I would say, uh, there were lots of stores who were just doing the direct market, 80s and 90s. Um, they would have back issues. Almost every comic shop had the little tables full of long boxes there with back issues. But in some cases, it was just, um, I mean, I'll make, I'll make this statement, which I'm sure some people disagree with. It was easier in that time period to do the direct market than do the back issues. Um, there were certainly people who were going and buying back issues and everything else, but what you would see is a lot of turnover with new comics, and you would see very slow or sluggish turnover with back issues. Again, depending on who you were and where you were, there's always you know, exceptions to that. But uh, with the crash of the 90s, I think a lot of places, you know, first of all, went out of business, and then others got skittish. And then uh, we've seen the new market, I think, slowly build back up through the Ultimate line. Uh, through things like Civil War and the New 52, you saw kind of the the reemergence of the uh, the direct market. There's still a couple of larger chain stores that I would call not typical comic shops like Hastings that had uh, direct market comics that they were getting in. I remember they were really big into the New 52 and everything that was happening there. Um, but in general, that was just an easier way to go. What we've seen over the last 10 years is, uh, and, and really it, it should have been happening before that, but several shops were slow to kind of catch on. Uh, we'll see what this, uh, this comics and geekery shop here, Sir Lone Bucks. There's a little, uh, there's a, there's a, their logo has a deer or, you know, with, with antlers there and a monocle and what looks like a little tie. So I'm very fascinated to see what's going to go on in this shop here. Um, we'll see if they let me take some pictures. I'm, I'm guessing no. But anyway, um, they, they, people always get funny about that. It's like, hey, free promotion for your shop. But anyway, we'll see. Um, the, uh, the, the, the key uh, is that when you are, I think when you're opening up a shop, you have to diversify what you're selling. You cannot survive on any one product alone. Um, you can try, and, and in certain markets, you can certainly make a go of it. I think there are places that have established themselves as good back issue kind of meccas where you can, you know, you can do well there. But you're taking a big risk. It's, it's, it's the classic, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. So it's better if you have a combo of you know, new comics, the direct market, as this person's saying, uh, back issues, trades, uh, toys, games, whatever you can get into here. Um, as I mentioned, the shop that I'm opening up uh, will have uh, a combo of those items, certainly, but also art lessons. And the idea behind art lessons is something that's very popular, at least up here, uh, in the Pacific Northwest, uh, we'll see how it how it exists down in Texas. But this idea that you parents can drop their kids off, parents are starving to give their kids after school activities. Art is something that's relatively popular. You can bring the kid in; they can learn how to draw, and it just provides one more revenue source. Your goal is to get revenue from lots of different places. That's the goal, and that's where where everyone really wants to be at. Um, but it, in, in some cases, it's easier to just start with new comics, especially if you don't have a good pipeline of, of back issues. 
Um, I think that what if comic shops opening up right now in 2021, I think are struggling to get their hands on back issues because a lot of the places you used to be able to go, whether you could go and, and kind of fill up your stock through, um, you know, buying assets from, from different locations, it's just harder to do that. A lot of those assets were bought up in 2018 through 2020, the early 2021, you had a lot of places really kind of go and, and put some big money out and, and seize up back issues. So it's, it's a little hard to get your hands on that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I look at this and say, it, it, it's up to you. I mean, if you as a business owner think you can make a go of it, then, you know, more power to you, whatever you, whatever you think you can sell. I know that there's some shops in, uh, this the kind of south of Seattle that are uh, vape and and uh, marijuana and comics and that works you can get your weed you can get your comics and that's that's the business they're in I mean I don't think there's any one right answer I think the only wrong answer is if you carry only one and and there's been a lot of shops I mean so I'll give you an example there's a shop up in Mill Creek uh, that got kind of famous because they made a bunch of really public angry statements against um, uh, Jawbreakers, that that crowdfunded book years ago, uh, when that came out, and they made a bunch of, of noise about it, and then they also did a like on Thursdays or something only kind of LBGTQ and women could come into the store. It was a women only uh, women. It was weird because women and LGBTQ is is like basically no men on on, but no men, no straight men. I, I don't, it, it was a weird. It, it, very, very strange uh, choice. But they were heavily into new comics only. They had trades. I think they had some games going on, but they had very few back issues. And the comic shop didn't last. I, I don't think it lasted a year. It may have gone a year and a half, but it, it, was, it died out pretty quickly. And a lot of us uh, here on forums of retailers up here in the Pacific Northwest and Facebook groups, you know, people were speculating about that. And, you know, my answer was, Look, you, 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 you div- that that shop continuously divided up its audience. It uh, instead of casting a wide net, which is what you kind of have to do in today's business climate for anything. Like, uh, there's very few stores that can survive just selling one thing. Um, in any kind of uh, uh, business needs to have as wide a net as possible. And this shop um, didn't really carry many back issues. They did. They took steps to limit their audience. So already you've got a tiny segment of, of comic buyers coming in, and then you're going to say, okay, we're going to have a women's only night. I mean, cool, I guess, for you know the women who are wanting to come in, but it feels like there's a way better way you can address that market. If there's a, if if there's a, if you have a female customer who is concerned about having a safe shopping experience, um, electing a, a women's only shopping hour is it, that's just we, that's that's strange. That's taking your audience and it's, it's shrinking it. And especially when you're a new business and you're trying to kind of get up on your feet and make a go of it, you need to, you need to be a lot bigger than that. You need to, you need to get a big audience, not a, not take steps to limit yourself. It's just crazy. Um, so I, I mean, all those factors, I think just really, you know, caused havoc with, uh, with this place. And that's, that's what it got. It didn't survive. Uh, pretty, pretty simple. Um, but you know, I, I, in terms of shops, I, I think at this day and age, if you're talking 2021, um, and you're going with a strategy of uh, new comics only direct market only, I mean, you're, you're, you're taking a massive risk. Uh, you may be able to make a go of it. It may, you may, you may make it work, but I, I just can't, I can't begin to imagine starting a business that way. Uh, you would be, you're, you're really banking on people. I, the other problem is, I mean, the comics come in once a week if you're just in on new comics. So you're basically t- saying that your, your business flow of traffic is going to be heavily weighted on one day and one day alone. Again, that's, that's madness. Um, this is not an argument for new comics suck or anything else. I'm sure there'll be plenty of that in the comments. Uh, parakeet, by the way. Uh, but there are, um, <laughs> but it, it's it's I would say the same thing if a shop opened up and said all we've got is back issues or all we've got is tabletop games. I mean it's it's hard. Um, nearby here in in Redmond, there's like a Uncle's Games. It's like they they specialize in tabletop games, and that shop as well is having. I mean they're they're starting to sell a bunch of other things. They have to 
because you, you can't survive that way. So anyway, thanks for the question. An interesting one. Now I'm going to walk in here to, uh, to Sir Lone Buck's House of Comics and Geekery, and we'll see what they have to say. Thanks for listening.